Well, good evening everybody. I'm Anne Jones. I'm the local assembly member for the area and also the deputy presiding officer at the Senate in Cardiff. And it's a great, great privilege to be joining you all tonight at the opening night of the Wicked Wales Youth Film Festival. It's a mouthful, isn't it? But never mind, you're going to have a great night, I'm sure. So we can't all come together. So sit back in your own homes, get your chockies and your drink out and enjoy the festival. This is the fifth time this festival's taken place. It's been a challenge. It's a challenge that the young people have risen to. So enjoy. And I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you will too. Uh, Croeso, uh, welcome. And to all the people all over the world that are watching us this year, uh, Croeso e Cymru, welcome to Wales. Uh, we're delighted to welcome you to what is our fifth International Youth Film Festival. And although it's different from last year and uh, we're all suffering some difficulties, uh, there's been some really exciting things happen this year and uh, you'll see it as we go on. We will be screening uh, 75 films over the la next two, day uh, two days until Sunday evening. So I hope you will join us um, for some of it, if not all. And the films will stay up on our YouTube channel for the next two weeks. So if you can't make it this weekend, please try and uh, watch the films at some point um, during the next two weeks. I'm joined tonight by um, Sam Jones. Uh, Sam yeah. is a volunteer, has been volunteer for us for two years and is also our production assistant for Wicked Wales. So Sam, you've worked on last year's festival and this year's festival with us. So a uh, bit different this year. Oh yeah, definitely. It's... Um... We haven't got all, our big audiences this year and um, it's all online this year so it's all it's far different but I think it's going to be just as good. What have you enjoyed about this year Sam that's been different? This year to last year I think we have a jury this year so it's uh, we've had every uh, we've had more than uh, just our team at Wicked Wells being um, judging the films this year and it's been amazing because we've been able to go on Zoom calls and just connect really nicely with different organisations, different companies but also different people from across the world. Yeah, so Sam's uh, mentioned that um, we've had a rather big jury this year. Uh, we decided that we would have young people, young filmmakers uh, as the judges this year. So we've uh, brought together a team of over 30 young people from seven countries who've been working with young filmmakers from Wales. And it's been the most wonderful experience. The, um, the quality of their judging, their commitment has been um, a real inspiration. And it's cer certainly something we'll do again next year, I think. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So you might wonder how um, a small festival in North Wales can attract um, hundreds of films and hundreds of award-winning films from this year it's 21 countries, last year it's 39 countries. Um, that's very much down to um, working in partnership and being part of an international network which is the Youth Cinema Network. Uh, we owe so much to the Youth Cinema Network and uh, our partners in it and we'd like to show you now a trailer which will give you an idea of what the network is all about.
So having seen the importance of the um, youth of the youth cinema network, Wicked have been supporting um, to set up a similar network in Wales. Um, we have been working with the coordinator Lorraine, um, and here she is to tell you more. Hello, I'm Lorraine, and I'm the coordinator of the Wales Youth Festival Network. The network was set up in 2019 with support from Film Hub Wales and Wicked Wales International Film Festival with the aim of supporting film festivals across Wales to screen a broader, larger range of British and international films to young audiences in Wales. And so far we've got over 30 members of the network including large international film festivals such as Abattoir, Iris Prize and we've also got lots of smaller and um, local niche film festivals such as Kotatsu um, alongside a whole range of other film festivals showing a whole whole range of different type of films for you, um, not all just for young people but hopefully most of them have got some young people elements or they are looking to screen more films for young people. Um, earlier on this year unfortunately due to the pandemic some of the plans for the network for um, um, projects together were put on hold um, so we decided to bring the network together collaboratively with an online film festival which was called the Three Films Festival. The um, Three Films Festival was um, took place over three days at the end of July and we invited film festivals in the network to submit three films from one of their recent film festivals to be screened at the festival. We had a fantastic range of films that were um, submitted and shown, um, many from young, young filmmakers in Wales and international young filmmakers as well. And we were also fortunate enough to have um, a small bit of funding from Film Films Connected which um, meant we could put together a small industry programme, which we felt was quite important to be able to inspire young filmmakers and young audiences with some ideas of how they might either get started or they might be able to take their career to the next level. So we had a screenwriting masterclass and we had a mobile phone filmmaking workshop. And we were also able to spotlight some new young Welsh voices as well. So we had um, some introducing um, sessions as part of the festival. Um, overall, the festival was a real success and we hope it will be the first of many collaborative projects which we do as a network. Um, currently, um, we're supporting Wicked Wales International Film Festival with the um, International Jewellery, which has been a great experience to work with the young filmmakers and students who've made up the International Jewellery. And we wish Wicked Wales every success with this week's weekend's film festival and we look forward to future collaborations with Wicked Wales and all the other film festival network members. One of the great things I've been part of uh, Youth Cinema Network is that we um, get to go to each other's festivals where we have the opportunity to screen films and also uh, discuss uh, ideas for collaboration in the future. And I was fortunate enough to go to Camera Zizanio in Greece, um, where I took part in their Mythos project. It's uh, about myths, and it was uh, a project of filmmaking, and they had over 100 young people there making films in a week, which I thought was a brilliant idea, and it absolutely worked. So we brought it back to Wales. We called it the My Thigh project, which is myths and legends in Welsh. And uh, we were fortunate enough to have Pauline Williams, who um, brought the whole project together, producer. And um, actually, in the end, we had two lovely films from it. So we took our festival to uh, the beautiful mountains of Snowdonia. And we were hosts at uh, Cash B with Reese. And uh, young people, international teams of young people, um, worked together. And as I say, we had two wonderful films produced. Sam, you're going to tell us a little bit about the films? Yeah, we are on. So the two films produced um, by Wales. So there's from the My Pie project that has been Return to Youth, which is a fiction film, um, a visually beautiful take on the Celtic myth, uh, Tin and Nog. Death is depressing, but infinite, infinity youth is downright terrifying. It is not for mortal to know it. And that's directed by Mihalo Buvik, aged 13 to 18. And then there's also Oh Cry, which is a documentary. And that is the two young filmmakers from Croatia and Colombia visit a town in North Wales they've never heard of with 
the intention of uncovering mythical stories. Instead they'll find a story which is very much alive today. The story of Quarrymen, directed by Lucia Piggle and Mafar Aji. So, enjoy the film. We have never visited this place before, never even heard of it, and pronouncing its name correctly is still a challenge. Blaina Festinyak, is it? But in two days we spent discovering its history, we found ourselves deeply immersed in the story of its people and the dark mountains. We came to uncover mythical stories, but we found a story which is still very much alive. The story of Quarrymen. Why did you say where did your father work? Which? This one here. In this one? Yeah. So, what, what have I got home? Is that close to the wall? That one is close to yeah. the wall. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that, that's the largest lake mine in the whole of North Wales. So he didn't go underground, he was still... So, um, so back, back in the day it was underground, uh -huh. but then more recently when he was alive it was kind of above ground. workers um, originally they had to walk to get into the mine. Um, in the first chamber you go in you will actually see a set of wooden stairs which date to just before the 1900s and they're one of the original methods that the miners actually used to get into the mines. Back in those days the only thing that was important enough to get a ride on the inclines was the rock. We can only get to 500 feet because where the water level sits now, but the mine itself is nearly 1,400 feet from top to bottom, so it's a, it's a fairly big hole in the ground. Okay, so welcome to paradise. This is all being carved out by these men with hand drills up until 1912, and then later on with the pneumatic drills. These are the drill marks. They're all over the place. So uh, once you've drilled into about two or three inches, you knew where you were, and what you would do to save money is you would blow your candle out and you would be drilling in total darkness. So yeah, I'm going to do all the work and it's like I'm going to do it with them. 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 You know, south quick, you know, south south, uh, go then hide, uh, down wine and be thermal, or they go the wrong way and run uh, in a second line. If it wasn't for the slate quarries, Blaine and Festinio wouldn't be here. Well, in Festinio, if I'm right, it went from about 70 people to start off with uh, a couple of small holdings to over 12,000 people uh, in a short space of time during the 1800s. And Buena Festino is the slate capital of the world, it's roof of the world. Tom Thag, a Jorge Lima, Arinam Sar, a Peter Milahan, a Rodonion, and Guithio, and a Jorge Lima. A Conaru Hutigo, Jorge Lipa Hain, the Naru Hutig and Guithiana. But you know, well, any day, then a lot of people and so what he made on the dreamer. But gradually, because of different reasons, uh, one of the main reasons was that this country started importing cheaper slates from the continent. You won't find a stone like this anywhere else in the galaxy, I don't think, or the cosmos or whatever. Um, so nature has provided us with a very special uh, piece of material. This is an original hand drill. All it is, is a steel bar, two chiseled ends, and a 10 pound weight at the bottom. If you needed a bigger hole, these can go up to around 20 feet or more. There's a really long one there. So fuse wire in first, then the gunpowder. Gunpowder would usually be kept around 20 feet away, or at least 20 feet away from your working area, in a safe box or a barrel. My father and my grandfather were some of the last people to be working down here on this level. And unfortunately, my grandfather did have an accident doing this job. He was stamping the gunpowder down, the blast went off early in his hand, and he lost the use of his hand. His hand was all mangled, couldn't straighten his fingers out, big scar down there, and blue freckles all the way up his arm, with a slate embedded underneath the skin. So I can appreciate the dangers that these men faced every day, and the sacrifices they made for their families. They were affected by by uh, the slate dust that the, that the quarrymen were, were breathing over the years. They were dying very, very young. There's one incident, one quote I remember of one doctor here saying that slate dust is particularly beneficial to health. Absolutely shocking, and the men believed it. I think people are in 
fatigued with what people used to do in the old days. And if we don't know what people used to do in the old days, then what do we know now? Now there's only one quarry left now. If I'm right, in this area there's about 5,000 people in the area. And the main industry these days is tourism. Um, and this is what I do, I work here as a tour guide. And when people come here and see the slate tips, they don't realise we have other beauties, you know, we have beauties around there, it's a beautiful part of the world. And the slate tips is just the remains, the evidence of the hard work of the miners over the years. Planificing itself doesn't benefit much from zip wire and the underground. People don't come, come down to the town. So we'd love, love to see uh, the town coming back to what it was uh, 50 years back, you know unfortunately and we don't have anybody to carry on to guarantee the, uh, the future of our, of our heritage, our special heritage and our, uh, and our Welsh language. My father worked here, my grandfather worked here, my great-grandfather worked here. They worked in these places and if they didn't do what they did, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Um, and then there, would, there wouldn't be a Blina Fistinio. This is what they did, they created the community and those traditions, they're fast being lost but they're impo it's important to keep the traditions and to keep the story alive. So how did you learn all of these? You did too. I don't know, I just did it. I don't think so I just do it. If I, if I think then I do mistakes but if I just do it. It's natural because I've, I've lived here all my life. I've lived with these all around me, all the, you know, the slates is all around me, so when you're, when you're a child with all of this around you, you just play with it and it becomes a natural second nature. There you go, one each. Yeah, there you go. Oh my God. Thank you so much. I don't know if I'm going to play with another one, I'm going to play with another one, but I'm going to play with a great deal of people who are going to play with me. I'm going to play with a great deal of people who are World Heritage Site can always be established in the first New York or the Finlandia, the Vesey, Donisilu, at a Guaith, a Kavraniat, a Duitiant, Sechi, Yiduitiant, Cymru, a Gay Economy Cymru in Darbini, a man on Danin the Rahamlan of our rival than the Duit Havana, Silu Mora Gallery. Ar gonest ferched gwynion Fe ddarfi'r dyddi a blinion Cawn dirion hyn o'n hân So, now, having showed you a little bit about what happened in 2019, uh, we moved to 2020 and uh, what we've been up to leading up to the festival. So, how has 2020 been for you, Sam? Oh, it's been, um, well, apart from the lockdown and the coronavirus, Working with the festival this year has been a real insight into the film industry because I've not just worked by myself or with just the Wiki Wells team, but I've worked with multiple different teams and seen different insights and opinions to other people from different countries as well. And you've had an exciting year. You've become a member of the uh, Interfilm Youth Advisory yes, uh, that's group. Correct. So uh, um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy doing that. Um, I think also we didn't have many screenings this year, so we've been yeah. busy doing other things, haven't we? Sam? Yeah, definitely some uh, things to look look forward to as well. Yeah, a lot of painting, a lot of cleaning. So we're going to give you a little snippet of what we've been doing in the next two films. So uh, we made a film about the lockdown uh, just to record what was happening before and during and after and then that is followed by a film that you'll t say a little bit about after the, the film about lockdown.
Well, sitting in our closed Wicked Cinema, um, all our activities are run by young volunteers, so we're missing them dreadfully, all of them. Um, our cinema, our community cinema is closed, like lots of community cinemas around the country, which is particularly sad for us. We were just about to celebrate our three years of um, bringing affordable family cinema back to Rill, um, so that's on hold. Um, our youth film festival um, has been delayed till the end of October and although a lot of it will go online we're hoping also that we can have some um, audience participation and our film education program where our young volunteers are able to access uh, training opportunities locally nationally and internationally that's all on hold but in another way we're busier than ever uh, we're using this opportunity while our cinema is shut to refurbish the lovely old theatre that we run our cinema from and the volunteers have been helping us with that. Um, we're also um, connecting with the young volunteers through Zoom um, so we can all keep in touch because we're planning our festival and we're also looking at ways of engaging with our audiences both for our family uh, cinema and our cult cinema. So there's plenty going on, we're also busy writing bids to uh, bring the money in and make sure that the theatre and our cinema is secure. Uh, so we're not downhearted, we can't wait until we open the doors again and uh, uh, welcome our families back into the cinema. So you can see a little bit about what happened during the lockdown and I know Sam, um, as part of engaging with our audiences, uh, you set up your own uh, vlog. So I've been doing something called Sam's Wicked Weekly, which is basically broadcasting everything and all the news every week that has been happening in Wicked Wells and all the insights you need. Um, to be able to look forward to and also all the information uh, so you are prepared for when we have this um, festival this year. So we've missed everybody, we used to really enjoy the screenings didn't we Sam because we always did extra activities as well for the children which everybody loved doing. Um, so we wanted to keep in touch with them and uh, Sam's vlogs have been doing that and the last one you did was a pretty special one wasn't it? Yeah it was an exclusive um, Wiki Weekly with Anne Jones the um, AM and she and it was amazing to have a, just sit down and have a chat with her about her experiences and how she felt when she walked in the building once we finished this whole make makeover and I hope that you have the same reaction when you come in as well. Yes Anne is a, um, a local person from the real area and has known this uh, cinema theatre for many, many years. Um, it was perhaps in need of a little bit of um, tender loving care, so uh, she had quite a shock when she came in and saw what we'd done, didn't she, So Definitely, it was a lot of fun to be doing it. There was also, you know, there's some stressful bits, some exciting bits, and also just being able to create a new establishment but keep the old feeling of, this, uh, of the theatre in its original format was just amazing to see and be able to be part of something so revolutionary. So you can enjoy now uh, Sam's special Wicked Weekly.
somebody who came and started, scrubbed the toilets with you, um, and then left you to it. Um, I stood by the door and I opened the door and it is like one of those real makeovers where you just stand there and you go, wow. And I always thought those people practiced that on those do-it-yourself shows, but no, it was a wow. And it's fantastic. And so well done, everybody. And my little bit probably was paled into insignificance, but no, it, it really felt so good. It's light, it's airy, and it's made such a difference. So yeah, I'm made up with it. I think it's really great, yeah. the festival now um, we've moved back in to concentrate on the films as I say we'll be showing you 75 films over the next uh, two or three days so I hope you can join us for some of it and we have one last thing to show you tonight so we have the festival trailer which is a little clip and little insight into what to look forward to this year uh, for our festival so we hope you enjoy it and um, we hope that you make we hope that you enjoy it so much so thank you for joining us tonight enjoy the films and please join us for our award ceremony on sunday night which is going to be exciting <laughs>